Last week I posted this video about the alleged offensiveness of a mathematics theorem known as Hall's Marriage Theorem at the University of New South Wales. Sky News' Carolyn Marcus broke the story after she interviewed some UNSW mathematics students, one in particular, Sean Lynch, shown here on the Bolt Report on Sky News. In that course, it was communicated to me that Hall's marriage theorem was offensive. That lecturer advised that we not uh, refer to the theorem by that name in our assignment. And did that lecturer explain why she thought marriage was offensive? The reason why is because the canonical example has homophobic implications, at least in her eyes. Because it involves pairing men or boys with women or girls. Yes, and um, you know, uh, when I was uh, discussing uh, how many of them know each other, we don't discuss how many guys know one another. Sean then found his way to my video and posted a link to a longer form of the story that appeared on Sky News, including the identity of the politically correct lecturers involved in this controversy. Another honour student told Sky News the same lecturer, Catherine Greenhill, warned his group last year that using the name marriage theorem was offensive. In November, the student's thesis was marked by another staff member, Dr Diane Coombe, who gave the following critique. The phrasing of the Hall's marriage theorem problem was offensive. This is not just political correctness. Most people choose to rephrase the context of Hall's matching theorem to reduce rather than emphasize the offensiveness. I think that the response is uh, definitely unjustified because um, it just shows that um, the markers couldn't separate their own uh, ideology from the content which they were marking. Subsequently, I asked Sean if he'd be willing to come on the channel and talk about his experience in a little more detail. So without any further ado, I present to you my chat with Sean Lynch. Joining me today is Sean Lynch, a fourth year honours student in pure mathematics at the University of New South Wales. How are you, Sean? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Uh, how about yourself, Scott? Fantastic. Um, so for those of you who haven't heard of Sean, he recently acquired his 15 minutes of fame as the subject of a recent controversy at the University of New South Wales around the alleged, I say alleged, offensiveness of a math mathematical theorem called Hall's marriage theorem. Would you like to tell us in simple terms for us dummies who aren't mathematicians uh, what Hall's ma uh, marriage theorem is? Yeah, for sure, man. So um, essentially, uh, suppose that you have a, a group of guys and you have a group of girls and they're equal in number. And uh, so, you know, you sort of work out, it's like um, a certain number of guys know a certain number of girls. And uh, the theorem is a way of determining whether or not you can uh, match up a guy with a, a girl so, such that everyone knows one another so you want to marry everyone off yep okay pretty simple so i mean this theorem uh was how do you say discovered written created uh in 1935. yeah yeah right? that that's right so obviously this is before the era of uh, gay marriage so to me this this, this is strange uh to call this offensive because it's i i likened it in my video to sort of um wanting to rename statues or pull statues down. It's, it's revisionist history. So um, can you tell us exactly how your, um, I assume that you had this in an assignment and how you came, it, it became offensive. How was how that message delivered to you? Yeah, sure. So um, first of all, I'll say that, uh, well, in Hall's original paper in 1935, he didn't use uh, like the notion of marriage to convey his ideas. And that's in part why, you know, it wasn't really taken on by too many people because it wasn't very intuitive. But then 15 years later in 1950, someone phrased it in terms of the marriage problem. Yeah, um, yeah uh, so I, I think the, the statue um, sort of analogy is a good one certainly because it, it is another example of historical revisionism. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of uh, how, um, yeah, so you're right, uh, it did come up on an assignment. Uh, we, we had to use the result. And so, um, you know, while I was uh, typing it up, 
um, I was uh, saying buy Hall's marriage theorem and then, you know, I hit the, the backspace button and change it to, you know, Hall's uh, condition, the, the uh, term that, that she wanted us to use. Yeah, so um, in terms of uh, how she, uh, you know, found it offensive, I, I believe that it's because of the homophobic implications because you're not concerned about how many guys know one another so that you can match up guys yep. or or with girls, uh, it's just, you know, a heteronormative. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were given the instruction not to use marriage before you had the assignment. Is that right? Is that how? So, um, okay. So she said that, um, she will not refer to it as Hall's marriage theorem. And she said that we do the same in our assignments. So, um, essentially like what i got from that is hmm she's not going to like it if i call it hall's marriage theorem mm -hmm. and i could be marked down for that right all right so so she never she she didn't give a reason why she didn't call it that she did did she say did she use the word I don't call it that because it's offensive or we just don't use that phrase and you had to read between the lines. Is that what it was? Yeah. So we did have to read between the lines a bit. She just sort of said, it's like, Oh, some people might find it offensive. And, um, ah. I, by the way, this lecture is also the diversity officer for uh, ah, the science surprise. Faculty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, see, this is, um, I don't know how familiar you are with my channel, but I've been documenting a lot of this um, sort of social justice creeping in. And as you, I think, said in your interview, you've heard a lot about it in the humanities, but um, people often think of STEM subjects as being safe from this sort of stuff because, it, it, you know, mathematics is about, and you're in pure mathematics, it's about as objective as it comes. Um, so what's what's this doing? Now, is that that particular teacher's name is Catherine Greenhill. Her name came out in the interview, the, the longer form interview that you left on my channel. Um, now, is she a member of the LGBTI alphabet community? <laughs> no, no, she's not. No, she's not. Okay. And what about um, what can you tell me about Diane Coombe? Because this is also interesting. Diane Coombe is another lecturer who apparently said the same thing to a an honest student last year uh is that right yes so, so in fact um uh in the long form interview uh some comments of hers on a previous student's thesis were, were displayed mm. and it clearly there were three or four lines explaining you know that it's offensive and that you know it's a traditional and very old view of how things yeah, should be let me read that out to you because I, I took it down. Excellent. The phrasing of the the phrasing of the Hall's marriage theorem was offensive. This is not just political correctness. Most people choose to rephrase Hall's marriage theorem to reduce rather than emphasize the offensiveness. So this is this is what I find funny about this stuff because offense is always asserted. You know, it's something you don't have to prove. That's offensive. Which because if you have a, a shred of self awareness and you were to say I find that offensive, which indicates that you realize offense lies with the taker rather than it being given, then you're kind of left uh, nowhere because the, the, the right response to someone who says, I find that offensive is, so what? Yeah. I don't care. Um, why you find that offensive? Well, sounds like you have a problem, not me. <laughs> that, that's, that seems to be the appropriate response. So um, is Diane Coombe, other than... Uh, Catherine Greenhill, is Diane Coombe also involved in diversity in any way? Is she a member of the LGBTI community or? Um, she's certainly not a member of the LGBTI community. Um, I'm not sure about, you know, um, her affiliation with uh, the diversity program or something of that nature. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's quite odd, isn't it? So, as part of uh, as Catherine Greenhill, as you said, uh, she is the diversity officer for the science department. You, you, all sciences, all yeah, sciences. Yeah, I believe so. What other uh, sort of recommendations or or programs has Ms. Greenhill come up with? 
Are you aware of any? Well, I don't know of any that she has uh, introduced in particular, but I, I will say uh, something else uh, with the school that I find to be quite odd. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually have um, awards for the best student in each year. So not only do we have those, but we also have an award for the best female student in each year. <laughs> and so, um, and you know, I, what I find really funny about this is in trying to promote gender equality and not be sexist, that just yeah, being it, sexist. It is. It, it's the soft bigotry of low expectations. It, this is what yeah. I, I find so contradictory about feminism. It, it used to be, I mean, if you go back the 90s, there was a kind of a empowerment feminism you know like yes you can go out and do whatever you want with your life today it is you can't do anything because you're oppressed and <laughs> you need you need a leg up you you constantly need special treatment and all the old stereotypes of say 30 40 years ago women are too emotional or too weak or too can't study this subject or can't do this type of work we we sort of got rid of those stereotypes but this type of feminism is bringing them back it is saying yeah. you are weak, you are too emotional. It, it, it's always, you know, it's like a special uh, person's award, isn't it? You know, it, it, it's, <laughs> oh, and here's, so here's the best student and he's the best girl student. Yay. Right. It's, yeah, yeah. Aren't, aren't, I mean, are the girls who receive these awards not slightly embarrassed to receive them or what? Um, oh, hard for me to say because uh, I'm, I'm friends with uh a girl in particular who's received that award many times um <laughs> but uh like that being said you know a, a male student won the the best student award right yeah and um yeah i mean i i think that that that, that says enough you know yeah uh, yeah <laughs> so you're in pure mathematics what what's the ratio of males to females in in, in oh. your yeah, so certainly there are a lot fewer females. Um, yeah, so for example, in my algebraic topology class, um, I think there are about, you know, there, there are a little over 10 students, um, mm. one of which is a girl. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it differs from subject to subject. So for example, um, that graph theory course, which I took last semester with Catherine Greenhill in which uh, the issue seemed to arise, that uh, mm. had a, a lot more more girls in it. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it really depends on, on the, the subject itself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Is there, a lot of, is there a lot of push in your department um, to get more girls? Is there a lot of these sort of, do they have outreach to high schools? What, what, what kind of programs do you engage in? Yeah, so um, there's this program called Girls Do Do Maths or so, something along those lines, and yeah, so they go to to high schools and uh, do that outreach, which I I do think is is a a tenable solution. Um, like mm. it's much better than enforcing gender quotas or something like that. You know, oh, I yeah. don't think that there's anything wrong in encouraging women to go into mathematics, but to say mm. that you know you're denying uh, a, a man the opportunity to get into that position who may be uh, better equipped then i think mm. that that's wrong yeah. um and uh in in fact um the university of melbourne actually uh enforced uh, gender quotas and they uh put up uh, two positions at their mathematics faculty which were restricted to women yeah i actually did a video on that last year they did oh, that last excellent. year yeah. yeah um and highlighted that because i mean something like uh, I, I did this, I did, I went through their entire staff lifts and they've had something like 18% of them were female, but just based off names. And um, I think across the board, women are usually no more than about 20 to 25% of math departments anyway. So it's not yeah. like the University of Melbourne was way behind, but I think the problem is here that it's a non-problem. I mean, so what if there are less women in STEM? So what if there are less women yeah. in tech? So what if there are less women in math? There are more women in veterinary science. You don't hear anything about that. There are more women in education. Yeah. There are more women in pharmaceutical sciences. There are, more, there are more women MDs today than there are males. That's apparently not a problem. It's only a problem when they are 
a minority. It's just assumed. Again, it's truth by assertion. Women are 40% of this, therefore it's a problem. No, it's not actually. <laughs> if, yeah. if you look at anything like books, uh, general interest, I read, actually I read a study yesterday about Facebook um, conversations, what types of conversations males and females participate in. Turns out that men are more interested in politics, sport, information technology, all the things that you would probably know. Expect. And women are more interested in romance, novels, and health and uh, fitness. Uh, actually, women are more interested in health, but men are more interested in fitness. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, why do we do this social engineering? We just don't need it. So uh, apart from that, have you seen any, uh, other than this sort of politically correct marriage theorem, have you seen anything else creep in to mathematics while you've been there? Is it is it only recent or do you feel like it's getting worse? Jeez. Um, yeah, I would say that uh, the most alarming thing to me was uh, when I heard about the gender quotas uh, that were enforced at the University of Melbourne. Um, in terms of uh, other results, I mean, yeah, like, uh, to be honest, there aren't too many results in mathematics that can be politicized. <laughs> um, this this was a, a special case. Um, although, um, actually, uh, that 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 that's an okay. That reminds me of something. So I, I'm not going to say say uh, the the word, but um, so there's uh, something called uh, the little n word theorem, mm -hmm. right? and uh, yeah, so. Uh, I, I can certainly understand why uh, some people in the U.S. may not uh, refer to, to the theorem by that that name, for example. Right? Well, especially not you, because your last name is Lynch, so you, that should be the last <laughs> thing that you're saying. <laughs> That's right, mate. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, um, just uh, I think it was. Um, tell me again the name of the the student uh, services guy that that said something publicly about. Uh, Catherine Greenhill and Diane Coombs. What was his name? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was Thomas Britz. Okay, so I have his statement here that he said that Diana, and she was the one who who um, made those comments on the thesis from last year, has has given a far too forceful and inappropriate message. That's what that was his comment. And Catherine hasn't given appropriate context. Now that says to me that he doesn't actually think that it's a bad thing in terms of Catherine, because all she would have had to do is give the context. So if she just said, um, look, uh, some people of the LGBTI community might find this theorem offensive, then to me that suggests that uh, he thinks it would have been okay. And he also didn't give me much hope because in the, long, in the uh, longer interview with Carolyn Marcus that was shown on the Bolt Report, he was reported as saying that, um, there'd been instances of, he was trying to link instances yeah. of sexual harassment, which had absolutely no link whatsoever. It's quite stunning that a mathematician would reach that far. Uh, it, it seemed. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so, it seemed um, like a, go ahead. So, so I would say that in general, he probably sides more with uh, Catherine and Diana on this matter, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, even he could concede that there was some folly in what they did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, the interesting thing is, is that all three of these lectures are in the same area of mathematics, uh, namely one called combinatorics. And um, it seems that the lectures which I've spoken to outside of that area don't have those grievances. Mm. <laughs> but, but I guess the problem is, though, that when there are these uh, positions that open up, such as you know diversity officers and whatnot, it's the wrong. It's exactly the wrong type of people that are going to sign up for those positions. It's exactly the politically correct types, the oversensitive types, the ones that find everything offensive, are the ones that are going to volunteer. So you're going to end up with a Catherine Greenhill for your diversity officer when actually you want someone who doesn't, you know, get offended to be the diversity officer because then nothing will be done, and that's exactly what you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's no, I, I've said this so many times, I think that corporate, 
the corporate world in the Western world could save millions of dollars overnight if they fired every single diversity and inclusion officer. They're just unnecessary mm. people. They just they exist for nothing. They're social engineers that create nothing of value. Um, but uh, just wanted to, I wanted to ask you about something. You you were also touted as the founder and president of the University of New South Wales Free Thinkers. So what's uh, what's all that about? Because it sounds interesting. Yeah. So um, essentially. Uh... I, I love um, philosophy as well, and I, I love uh, having political discussions with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was trying to find um, a society to join in, in order for me to be able to have those discussions. Mm -hmm. But uh, I couldn't find a society which was appropriate. And uh, in particular, I couldn't find one which wasn't tied to any given ideology. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to create free thinkers to, to do exactly that. Mm. That's, uh, yeah. I think that's very dangerous in this day and age to have free thoughts. <laughs> yeah, people like uh, Gillian Triggs wants to control what you say around your kitchen table. So uh, <laughs> you, better, you better be careful having free thoughts, especially on a university campus. Um, I'll be sent right off to the gulags. Exactly. So I don't know, Sean, do we have anything else uh, we'd like to say? Uh, any words any words of warning to potential pure mathematics students coming to the University of New South Wales? Because I know that school has a pretty good reputation, so um, hopefully uh, this is just a blip on the radar. Yeah, to, to be honest, uh, I, I've had a fantastic time um, at UNSW, and I, I would recommend it to, um, to other uh, future mathematics students. Um, yeah, the only thing I would be wary of is, yeah, just... Uh, keep in mind that some people may tell you that uh you probably shouldn't uh call it hall's marriage theorem and, and there may be some other instances of that in the future which i, I can't foresee oh, i think i i think the um i think probably the new south wales free thinkers association the university of new south wales free thinkers association should take up this cause and fight for the for, mar sure. for the marriage theorem and the restoration of its uh, true name for sure yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, the, the only other thing I want to say on that note to uh, future mathematicians as well is uh, I'm actually planning on uh, doing a lecture series on YouTube on my channel. Um, yeah, and uh, it's going to be entitled uh, The Art of Mathematics. And uh, the sort of uh, premise behind it is, well, I'm actually, you can't see any of them now, but uh, I've got a fair few tattoos and mm. they're all mathematics tattoos. <laughs> and so... Uh, that that's why I've called it the art of mathematics because the lectures are actually going to be based on uh, the, the, the the tattoos and um, it actually gives a really good sort of a uh, historical outline of some important ideas. It's also a good way to cheat in exams. You just have a look at your tattoos up your sleeve. No, exactly right, <laughs> mate. That, that's why I got them. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the name of your uh, YouTube channel, just so people know? Yeah, sure. So um, it would just be Sean Lynch. Yep. yep. So it's not up yet. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna start it up in a couple of weeks or so. So it's already up. Um, yep. But at the moment, the only uh, video that's on there is um, this uh, sort of panel discussion on religion, which I hosted last year under uh, UNSW Free Thinkers. Mm -hmm. So the um, lecture series will be coming soon, hopefully. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, we'll give you. We'll put a link to your channel uh, down in the low bar of this low bar. Nobody says low bar <laughs> anymore. Down in <laughs> down in the description of this uh, video, uh, and so people can go check it out. Well, awesome. thanks very much for being here, mate. It's been great to talk to you. Oh, it was lovely meeting you. Good one. Mm.